Woke up to these four gallons of milk at the door, and I was like, oh my god, maybe my dad is back. But then I quickly realized it's just my annoying roommate messing with me again. For the first time ever, I'm in a surplus of milk. Let's take a look at a few easy homemade cheese recipes to learn together. Starting with the classic mozzarella, obviously following instructions from the king of cheese pulse, Joshua Wiseman. Word on the street is that he hates the way I cook, but when I confronted him about it, he said, Yes, it's true. The milk I used was low temp pasteurized and non homogenous homogenized. Raw milk is also a great option. As much as I like it raw, we're gonna have to use this homogenized and pasteurized milk. First thing, 8 grams of granulated citric acid. First thing, 8 grams of raw citric acid. Then you're gonna mix half a teaspoon of liquid rennet with a quarter cup of water. Then I'll mix a quarter tablet of this vegan rennet with a quarter cup of water. Cold milk in a large pot. Cold milk in a large pot. Vigorously stir in our citric acid to make sure it gets dispersed evenly. Vigorously stir in our raw citric acid to make sure it disperses evenly. Stirring occasionally until you reach 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Stirring occasionally until it reaches 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Immediately remove your milk from the heat. Pour in your rennet mixture. Immediately turn off the heat and pour in my rennet mixture. As soon as that rennet starts to hit that milk while you're stirring, immediately start counting to 25. 1, 2, 3, 4, 18, 20, 21, 24, then add a lid. Bad boy, let it sit for five minutes. Then add a lid. I'm gonna sit down for five minutes. When you gently tilt the pot, you'll be able to see that there's a distinct separation of the curd and the whey. When we gently tilt the pot, I see an indistinct separation between the curd and the whey. Cut your curd into a crosshatch pattern using a long knife. Cut my curd into a crosshatch pattern using a long knife. I clearly struggled here with the curd, you know, trying to escape me. I'm clearly killing it as the curd facing the knife head on. Back on a medium low heat, stirring on occasion very, very gently. Back on the heat and stir it very, very gently. You do not want to break up the curd too much. Uh, does this count as breaking it up too much? Heat it until it reaches 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Heat it until 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Then remove your curds using a slotted spoon or a ladle. Then remove my turd using a ladle. Then gently squeeze out some of the excess whey in the curd. Then gently squeeze out the excess whey in the curd. Heat a small pot of seasoned whey to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Heat a small pot of whey to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour it over your curd in a bowl. Pour it over my turd in the bowl. And you don't have asbestos hands like I do, then you can totally use food safe dish gloves. I'm gonna protect it because in many cases, the only part of me that works. Pick up your curd and separate your hands and let gravity stretch it downward. Pick up my curve, separate my hand, and let gravity stretch it downward. I failed gravity in high school, and today gravity failed me. Repeat this folding and stretching until it's smooth and one even mass. Repeat this folding and stretching till it looks like a collection of chewed up gum. Through your fingers in a C shape, and once you've got the size you want, simply Pinch that bad boy off. I don't know where it all went wrong with this whole process, but I don't think we'll ever get to the pressing and pinching part. So we're just gonna shape the curds like a snowball and call it mozzarella. In case you haven't been able to tell, I'm not the best at making cheese, but I'm really good at juggling. Check this out. Now, with this anti-gravitational mozzarella and the radioactive kumatos, top it off with salt and olive oil. We just made the most awkward looking Capri salad in the world. As usual, take a centerpiece, taste it, and rate it 1 through 10. If I had a blindfold on and I didn't know this was supposed to be mozzarella, I would have guessed that it's a piece of old slime from somebody's attic. I think I forgot to season it too, so it's extremely bland. Still cheese, you know, so I'll finish it. But the more I eat it, the more I feel like I accidentally just made paneer. And the more I think about that, the more I crave paneer tikka masala. So why don't we make some paneer with our next gallon? You're gonna see very similar steps as the one before, only easier. So starting with a gallon of cold milk on the heat, we'll prepare almost a cup of vinegar. I forgot to get white vinegar, so I'm using rice wine vinegar. Let's see how it turns out. This time, instead of measuring the temperature, we're just gonna bring it to a simmer. Now pour in all of the vinegar and let it sit for five minutes. As we wait, we can prepare the cheesecloth strainer situation. I think Rick used this to switch brains with Jerry. As I'm ladling the curds, I realize the whey this time is creamier than before. We'll fold up the corners of the cloth and start twisting it into a little sack. So I put on gloves because this paneer is way too hot. <laughs> I'm trying to make a paneer curry so I think we need to make it a little drier than normal. Squeezing and twisting really hard to find my way out. Kind of reminds me of Disneyland with my uncle. When it's almost dry we'll put it in the bowl and store in the fridge for at least four hours. After a while, it's all dried up and hardened. It looks really soft. has a nice, smooth surface. I don't know what happened here, though. We'll cut the cheese into small pieces. I think it's basically a simplified version of butter chicken, but with no chicken. 
We'll just fry up the onions to give it a little bit of color and then add a variety of spices. Garam masala, cumin, turmeric, chili powder, salt, and some white pepper. We'll introduce everybody to the heat to get them all acting up and then pour in the tomato puree. The recipe calls for fresh cream. I don't know what that is, so I'm using sour cream. Put in the main character, very gently stir it in. Once heated through, we're pretty much done. It's my first time making paneer tikka masala. What do you guys think? If you're from India, let me know if I'm qualified to cook on an Indian train. Now it's kind of reminding me of mapa tofu. Let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. I really liked it, and I was gonna put Zubi Dubi from Three Idiots as my reaction song, but I'm really scared to wake up to T-Siri copyright striking my ass. You know what, next time we cook Indian food, it will be a dish from a Bollywood movie. Overall, this tastes like a super tender butter chicken. 8.5 out of 10. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering why I'm talking different today, it's because I just got Invisalign. Sometimes I'm gonna speak with the lisp, so give me a few days to adjust. You guys know that there's nothing my mouth can't handle. So ricotta in Italian means means recooked. It's basically a product of the leftover whey from mozzarella and other soft cheeses. The paneer left us with some good looking whey. We're gonna extract it as much as possible. When it's nice and creamy, I don't waste a drop. Starting with the juice of a whole lemon and about a third of a cup of vinegar. I think the amount doesn't really matter here. We're just trying to curdle everything. When you bring the whey to a simmer, we can pour in everything. Immediately, you'll see the curdling happen. And as usual, with one stroke, we can separate the white stuff from the body of liquid. This is what it looks like after 30 seconds. While it's hot, Let's set up our cheesecloth and start draining. It's a little too much work, so I'm just gonna pour it all in. With the visuals of the texture and the acidic smell in the air, it's taking me back to my college days. We'll just pull the cheesecloth out. At this point, the curds should have very little liquid. Look how different the way it looks compared to the last one. And I think traditionally, once you season it, people just serve ricotta chunky like this. But I feel like it'll taste a lot better if we blend it till smooth. We'll put in the food processor along with some salt and a splash of milk. It's a little counterintuitive, I know. In less than 3 minutes, it should reach a creamy and smooth texture like this. I know what you're thinking. We have strayed away from Italy and went straight to the heart of Philadelphia. And since a bagel is just a utensil to deliver cream cheese into my mouth, we're gonna season the cheese with everything bagel seasoning and leave the bagel with nothing. How would you rate my logic from 1 to 10? Let me know in the comments. I was gonna go to Ross and Daughters, but it's a 45 minute line. And I feel like if I wait that just to get a single plain bagel, they might spit on my face. So I came to this place called Kozar's. They seem pretty organized from the outside. Now I have the plain bagel, we'll split it in half. And instead of a everything bagel and cream cheese sandwich, we're gonna make a bagel with everything bagel seasoned cream cheese sandwich. And as always, the key to a great sandwich is cutting it diagonally, which is why a circle shaped bread is superior because every center cut is a diagonal cut. Do you like my logic there? Let me know in the comments. My first time having homemade cream cheese. Let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. If I have to compare it to the Philadelphia one, I'll say it's a little more creamy. A lot less sour and smoother, actually. Even though we use pre-cooked whey, it has this richness that the store-bought ones just doesn't compare. Very pleasantly surprised. I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10. I highly recommend you trying this at home. So let's do a quick recap before we move on. When we try to make mozzarella, we made paneer. When we try to make paneer, we made paneer. And then when we try to make ricotta, we made cream cheese. So 33%, that's a passing grade for me. Our last experiment is not necessarily cheese but it's still a fermented dairy product the anabolic building block behind every fitness influencer's physique the roman empire of will tennyson the juice of zeus greek yogurt i read online that all you need to do to make yogurt is to combine a scoop of yogurt with some milk they call this the infinite yogurt glitch which means as long as you have some yogurt you can always use it to make more so here comes my question if you use yogurt to make more yogurt who made the first batch of yogurt and how did he make it after we combine everything we'll put it in a really warm cold place to ferment for six hours. It should be thicker and smooth. And as you guys can tell here, I put it in my mini oven, which I rarely use. I also forgot to set a timer for six hours, so... It actually smells like yogurt. It seems like the top is curdled, floating on a layer of thin whey liquid. But as you dig deeper, the bottom stuff actually looks like normal yogurt. Just kind of chunky and thinner. We got all these different layers of texture. Let me try to homogenize everything. Maybe it'll make it look better. Normally, I wouldn't dare to try this, but it honestly smells alright. Since this has an uncanny resemblance of something I'm used to, I'll put a little bit on my tongue just to see what it tastes like, but I won't promise on swallowing. 
If you've been a fan of this channel for a long time, you know that I've had my fair share of spoiled milk, and this doesn't taste like that. It doesn't really taste like Greek yogurt either. It falls in the middle of the spectrum. Maybe it'll taste more like yogurt if we eat it like a yogurt. Do you think this looks appetizing? Yeah, I actually didn't do it, even I have to back out of that. I wonder if it's the problem with my yogurt or the problem with my milk. Or maybe it's me. So another recap, when we try to make mozzarella, we made paneer. When we try to make paneer, we made paneer. When we try to make ricotta, we made cream cheese. And when we try to make yogurt, we made poison. So we had a pretty nice experiment, I'd say. And if you're lactose intolerant, please accept my belated apology. Now let's share some good news. We're finally doing another struggle meal video. So if you have a recipe you want me to share with the community, feel free to DM it to me on Instagram. I also got a PO box for us. You can send me letters with the recipe attached for me to make. Or you can send me whatever you want. I'll try my best to write back. I know this is an anonymous channel, but I still want to make connections with all of you in the real world. My Instagram and address are in the description down below. And finally, Happy New Year, everybody. A lot of exciting videos and a few trips coming up. So don't judge me if I start vlogging. Alright, thank you.